They are regarded as the original practitioners of firebending. With their mystical lore and the ability to breathe fire, they were worshipped as being the greatest of the firebenders. And today, we will be taking a look at them. Hey guys, this is Kyle from Bari Studios TV, the who's, what's, where's, when's, and tens of anime. And today, we will be looking into the lore, mysticalities, and history of dragons within the world of Avatar. This has got to be one of my favorite topics overall because I love dragons. We will be noting every dragon that appears in the series, not by order, but by date in which they appeared in the world of Avatar. If you haven't seen the series as yet, I'm issuing a spoiler alert. So without further ado, let's jump right into this. The features, behaviors, and names of these dragons. These large reptilian creatures sport horns and have a large scaly body with a thin tail. They have large heads with somewhat of a beard, a huge Jupiter looking flat nose, and super cat like ears. Now, based on the appearance of each dragon in the Avatar series, it seems that they were all mostly different, which indicates different species of dragons existed in the series. Their species were never noted other than them being referred to as just dragons. Dragons were designed for flight, smaller legs with larger wings. On top of that, they have an extra pair of wings for speed in flight. Now based off what we've observed in Avatar, dragons are intelligent and perceive human speech like most other close pets in this series like Momo or Appa. And like all other loyal pets, dragons also devote their lives to their masters as we see with Avatar Roku's dragon. Let's look at each of the dragons that appear in Avatar and break down each of their scenes. Their names are Druk, Fang, Green Dragon, Ran and Shaw, Sozin's Dragon, white dragon, red and blue dragons. Now the red and blue dragons are actually dragons that appear in one of Zuko's nightmare. Just, just stating it out there. All right, we'll start off this list by looking at the white dragon. This dragon was seen in the year 9832 BG as being the first to teach humans in the way of the dancing dragon, one of the most powerful firebending forms out there. This human was Avatar Wan. But this was when he was banished to the spirit wilds. Now, as starting out learning how to use his newly acquired fire, he stumbled upon the great beast and saw how magnificent the movements were. Now, he did what any sane human would do. He copied those movements and he learned the dancing dragon. Pretty cool. Next up on our list is the dragon's nest, which actually features two dragons. Now this was before Aang was frozen in a block of ice. Him and one of his best friends from the Fire Nation Kuzan searched and tried to find dragons in the Fire Nation mountaintops. When nearing a dragon's lair, they stumbled upon dragon egg poachers who wanted to sell the egg on the black market. After the mother was lured away from her nest, the poachers stole the egg and put the egg into a saddle bag. Kuzan and Aang decided to trick the thieves with sound effects and firebending and they ran away. During this time the mother returned and you can tell that she was not happy about this. The mother, Aang and Kuzan got into a little scuffle where they actually saved the egg from falling and breaking. It is at this point that the mother decided to trust the two and allow them to leave unharmed. Hey, I just wanted to let you know that even though the Anipalooza event is finished, you still have a chance to win Amazon gift cards. Simply navigate your way down to the description below, fill out the form with your name and email address. You can enter as many email addresses as you want, but only one name. Don't worry, we won't send you any spam or any useless marketing email. Each time we have a raffle, which can either be each week, bi-weekly or monthly, you do have a chance to win an Amazon gift card. Anywhere from $10 to $500. All you'll need to do, enter your email. So go ahead and have some fun. I hope you win. The next dragon on our list is Fang. So here we are at the most famous dragon in the Avatar series, my boy Fang. Technically the first dragon we see in spirit form. He transports Aang to Roku's statue, and he was Avatar Roku's dragon from birth until his death. Roku actually raised Fang since he was an egg. His parents were missing and the two became inseparable. In the end, Fang and Roku died in 12 BG when a volcano on his island erupted. Despite Roku insisting that Fang flee for his life, the dragon disobeyed and rushed to his side. Oddly enough, Fang followed Roku into the spirit world and became his spirit guide. On top of that, Fang was so cool he even got some supernatural power. The first time we see Fang, he was sent by Roku. He used telepathic abilities to alert Aang about the comet approaching. 
As a spirit, he has the abilities such as intangibility and invisibility. And the only known people to see Fang in his spirit form in the mortal world were Aang and General Iroh. Speaking of which, we actually have a video coming up showing you 10 details that you missed within the first season of Avatar The Last Airbender. Be sure to check that out when it comes out and I'll leave a link on screen and in the description whenever it does pop up. Now continuing the video. Fang has also unique telepathy abilities which he used to communicate with others. His messages were sent through his whiskers. He cannot actually transmit speech, but only he can use images and impressions, telling Aang that he was Roku's dragon from a former time that they met, and letting the young avatar know where he could speak to Roku near the Fire Nation temple. Fang has sent others back to the physical world, such as when he did with Aang flying into the Heibai statue. He reawakens Aang's lifeless meditating shell. And being a dragon, Fang retained his ability to fly. Sozin's Dragon Sozin's dragon was known to be a fierce one, as fierce as the Fire Lord himself. This dragon can fly great distances at an unnatural speed. His physical characteristics are blue. That's it. He just looks like a regular dragon, okay? In 12 BG, Sozin used his dragon to cross the 100 miles that separated the Fire Nation capital and Roku's island in order to help his old friend battle an erupting volcano that threatened to engulf the entire island in fire. When Roku was fainting from the poisonous volcanic gases, Sozin's dragon swooped in and saved only his master. While the pyroclastic flow swept over the avatar and his dragon, killing them both. Pretty dark. The Red and Blue Dragons During his time in Ba Sing Se, Prince Zuko had some internal struggles, to say the least. He had a dream when he was a scarless Fire Lord. In this dream, he saw two dragons, a blue and a red one. The red dragon was the voice of reason and spoke in his uncle's voice, while the other dragon was voiced by Azula. This same dream had come to pass when he was in the catacombs of the city where he was faced with a similar choice of good and evil. He chose to side with his sister, though I really like how Avatar The Last Airbender focuses on this symbolism nearly throughout the entire series. Commonly, the red dragon represents goodness and purity, while the blue dragon is evil as per usual. We saw this similarity in Sozin and Roku's dragons. Over time, they even became enemies. As you know, the theme of Avatar circles around balance, Ran and Shaw. Lee and Twa, a way the series keeps itself coherent throughout the end. Ran and Shaw, probably two of the most famous dragons in the series, aside from Roku's dragon. Ran and Shaw were said to be the last two dragons in existence after the Fire Lord hunted them down to near extinction. The last firebender to hunt down the dragons were Iroh, and he lied to actually keep both of them alive. When Zuko lost his firebending due to him losing his motivation for hunting down the Avatar, him and Aang went to seek a new method of firebending. They stumbled upon the Sun Warrior Ruins, where it was said to be deserted. They got trapped and soon found out that the Sun Warriors were really alive. During this time, they were tested by the two masters, who turned out to be dragons, Ran and Shaw. They soon mimicked the dragons' movements in the Dance of the Dragons and were deemed worthy to know the origins of firebending. Druk By 171 AG, a new dragon, Druk, had been born and had come to be used by Zuko as a method of transportation. However, dragons were still extremely rare to see and very few people had been aware of their existence to even begin with. The average person was shocked to view one. We honestly have no idea the backstory behind this dragon, but we're happy that one actually exists apart from Ran and Shaw now. Struggling with YouTube? You decided to start a channel, but you hardly see any growth. And you're wondering how to become the Mr. Beast of YouTube? I have the simple answer for you, TubeBuddy. This is a browser extension that will drive your focus and provide you with exponential growth on YouTube. Why walk the path alone when you have a buddy in TubeBuddy? How does it work, you're asking? TubeBuddy helps you decide everything, literally 
from the planning of the video to the titling and even the publishing. You can even optimize videos that have already been published long before you had TubeBuddy. Still don't know where to start? TubeBuddy gives you viral video ideas straight from the dashboard. You can see what's trending in almost any country. So go ahead, pick your video and drive traffic to your channel. You also get memberships and discounts to some great stuff like background music and even assets for your YouTube channel. Still not sure how to build thumbnails, titles, or need advice on how your channel is doing? No problem. TubeBuddy has a community on Discord that'll help you talk to real people and answer all of your TubeBuddy questions within a few seconds. To download TubeBuddy for free, there is an affiliate link in the description below. It will be TubeBuddy.com forward slash Varistudios TV. That will be TubeBuddy.com forward slash V-A-R-I-S-T-U-D-I-O-S TV. You do not have to purchase a membership with TubeBuddy. You can use most of the tools free of charge and it's super powerful even at the free level. But if you do decide to purchase a membership with TubeBuddy, I also get a commission with no extra cost to you. You not only get the chance to grow your YouTube channel, but it also supports our channel as well on making better content for you. So why wait? Stop struggling with YouTube and fast track your growth with TubeBuddy today. I bet you're really loving this video. Here's a great way that you can support us. Like, share, and subscribe to get notified of when we post new content. To actually get notified, click on that notification bell. Now back to the video. What really happened to the dragon? We touched on this a little bit of what happened to the dragons, but let's expound on that a little. It was this shriveled up prune that decided it was wise to hunt dragons. He was named Fire Lord Sozin. The exact connotation was that dragons were the ultimate benders, and if a bender was strong enough to kill a dragon, then the bender would be great or greater than the dragon and will be awarded the title of dragon, and then their skills would become legendary. Near the end of the Hundred Year War, dragons were thought to be extinct due to General Iroh claiming that he killed the last one. However, this was not so. Aang and Zuko discovered that two dragons, Ran and Shaw, were still alive. Neither of them can be distinguished by their names because nobody ever told us who is who. But they deduced that Iroh lied about killing the last dragon in order to protect the species. Now, the inspiration of dragons are noted from several different cultures. Of course, they are heavily influenced by traditional depictions of the dragons, which are long serpentine bodies, whiskers, fin-like ears, primal eyes, canine snouts, and the positions and proportions of the horns and legs are all good examples. One of the nine different types of Chinese dragons also possesses wings. There are influences from other Asian cultures as well such as dragons having four toes. This is typically a Korean trait. Looking at dragons in Chinese and East Asian mythologies, dragons have always had a mix of a couple creatures together. Lizards, camels, goats, and bats, among other animals, of course. Naturally, in Western cultures, the images of dragons have been, to say the least, edited and the presence of wings are all characteristics more in European dragons. But they are included in the dragons of the world of Avatar as they are the typical aspects of Western ideas of dragons. These features were also included and enhanced to the dragons connected to firebending, as Asian dragons are more closely associated to water more than any other element. Have you been enjoying this video? Check out this recent video and even some of our playlists. And remember to subscribe and ring that notification bell to get notified of when we upload new videos.